You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options facebook.com slash the options insider or via questions at the options insider.com welcome to volatility views the premier program for volatility traders each week we'll take a deep dive into the world of volatility with in-depth analysis trading activity reviews strategy breakdowns cutting-edge education, and much more. We'll also bring you exclusive conversations with the traders, researchers, and asset managers who are reshaping the volatility landscape. If it involves volatility, then you'll find it on Volatility Views. Volatility Views is brought to you by SIBO. When it comes to trading volatility, trust SIBO, the creator of the VIX Index, for in-depth and relevant information. SIBO's blog gives you up-to-date trade insights, analysis, and positions of VIX options and futures. No matter what kind of trader you are, there's plenty of useful information to take the guesswork out of creating your portfolio strategy and to help you make more educated moves in the market. Visit www.cboe.com slash blogs today to sign up for regular updates via email. And now, it's time to take a deep dive into the world of volatility. It's time for Volatility Views. All right, everybody. Welcome back to Volatility Views, the premier program for vol traders. You know you guys out there, you know, maybe you pros on there on the desk or doing a little dispersion, or maybe you're a super hardcore retail guy and you've been brought to the dark side of VIX and VXX and all that fun stuff. Whoever you are, welcome. Gather around the volatility campfire. We're going to spend a nice hour with you talking all things, all things vol. So I uh, hope you like it. If not, tune in to the wrong show. My name is Mark Longo from theoptionsinsider.com, as well as, of course, from the ever-exciting Options Insider Radio Network. You guys know the drill by now. If you not, haven't done so already, wherever you listen to this, make sure you grab the full network feed. Make sure while you're there, if you like what you're listening to, put a few stars there in the old ranking, maybe a review or two. Don't worry about the meatball. We don't have to think about him in the reviews. Just give us a nice, a nice glowing review there. You know how these aggregators work out there. Uh, the more reviews, the more juice there, the better. And, of course, however you listen, make sure you hit us up questions, comments, insights, pearls of wisdom. For you hardcore, as we do, make it available live as well, Friday noon central, 1 p.m. Eastern, via the old Mixler. Mixler's been a little funky for the last day or so. We had some issues yesterday with Option Block. Hopefully, let's see, it holds, it holds up today through, uh, through, through Vol Views. I appreciate all you guys, a lot of you, fighting through the issues yesterday on Option Block to tune into the show. So we appreciate your, uh, your diligence. Let's hope we don't have a repeat. Fingers crossed. If you have any issues uh, c- contacting using the live stream, let us know. Hit us up via social media. We'll see what we can do. We don't create it, but we can maybe uh, work, do some workarounds, make sure it's all working. And, of course, again, hit us up. Questions, comments. You guys know the drill. And speaking of the drill, joining me to help me do it today is the greasiest of meatballs, Mr. Mark Sebastian from, uh, shall we say, the newly revamped, relaunched Carmen Line. Mr. Meatball, what's going on and what's cooking over there in Carmen Line these days? You guys are up to something. Yeah, well, so we still have our um, volatility fund, which was our original fund. But we're in the middle of a, rolling out our, our second hedge fund. Uh, the Carmen Line Broad Cap Edge Fund. Uh, obviously, this is for qualified investors only, um, but we are going to attempt to try and you know meet or beat the S and P 500 in bull markets, and then um, when the market is down, capture less than uh, five to ten percent of uh, the downside. So uh, long term, we're looking to just beat the bananas out of the S and P. 
Uh, how are we doing this? We're doing it via options. So, um, you know, we're using uh, kind of a wheel trade approach to trading the S&P 500. Uh, and, you know, as we've looked at it long term, we think we are going to be able to significantly uh, outperform the S&P. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, you know, our hope is to kind of blow that thing out. I think it's going to be uh, so far so good. The reception has been really, really positive. Um, in addition, for uh, well, well found, uh, funded qualified investors, we do have a couple of perks for getting in pre-launch. But again, this is for qualified persons only. If you qualify as a qualified person, you're welcome to reach out to me, uh, Mark at Carmen Line Capital. So uh, we're, we're doing some fun stuff. If you are a fan of the wheel and you're a fan of um, just-in-time hedging, then uh, the Carmen Line Broadcap Edge Fund may be a, a really good fit for uh, you, assuming you're a sophisticated, qualified investor. The wheel. Everybody loves the wheel these days. You guys, the folks at RCM, everyone. The wheel. You know, you don't have to go crazy in terms of sophistication uh, to do good stuff. Speaking of which, how I'm, I'm sure there probably are some out there, maybe, but how how I'm sure there's got to be a fund. If not, maybe you should launch. I know you've already got some. So much just raise a fund, a vol fund, and just put it all in a few million far out of the money VXX puts and say, come back and check with me in three years, see yeah. how we're doing. I think that fund would probably do pretty well <laughs> over yeah, time. Yeah, I mean, those VXX puts that, that uh, traded a quarter, uh, where VXX is higher than it was then, and the, the market is currently 3240. And I've gotten some off at uh, 1,000 have traded today at 32 cents. And uh, I've gotten some off at 40 from my initial purchase. So, uh, you know, it, it's not a, not a bad little little dealy for uh, how far out of the money that is. Um, just goes to show you that Jan 2019 vol is not cheap. Um, and, uh, you know, if people – one of the things people don't fail to realize is that when vol gets really, 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 really high, spiky at all, um, VXX and UVXY and VIX vol explodes. And so fading via options becomes a lot trickier. It's not nearly as easy as people think. Uh, you have to really be strategic about it. Otherwise, you end up, you know, I, I, I was listening to, uh, I was having lunch with famed trader uh, Lee Stern. Uh, of, uh, for those of you that have not read the, biogra the, uh, the biography of the boy from the Windy City about Lee Stern, uh, he was telling me a story about uh, a guy in his, in his pit that on the low, bought calls in OEX of the crash of 87 and could not figure out why he didn't make money. He still to this day is like, you know, I bought those calls and I didn't make all this money that I thought I was going to make. And I don't understand it. And, uh, you know, that is the, the great lesson in volatility. But uh, the same kind of rule applies to, to VIX spikes. When VIX explodes, VVIX explodes, UVXY vol explodes, v, uh, VXX explodes, you have to be smart and strategic about how to set up a trade. Otherwise, you are going to get your lunch handed to you, and you're not going to make nearly the kind of dough that you think you're going to make. All right, listeners. doesn't seem like we're having a few sporadic issues with the Mixler, so if you're in there, uh, power through. If it drops, we'll try to get you back. I don't know what. They're having some issues, I think, with their streaming servers. Over, We're just overwhelming them here on the options inside our radio network, so stay on it. Uh, if it goes down, we'll try to get it back up for you. Meanwhile, we've been trying to fill a little time, as you can probably tell, give – Give the old man about town at the SIBO time to get here from his conference. We're just going to keep rolling right on into our volatility review. It's time to break down the latest developments in the volatility trading world. It's time for the volatility review. everybody welcome to the vol review this is indeed the portion of the show where guess what we review some vol in terms of what's been trading over the course of this week and indeed still is uh, vol catching a little bit of a lift towards the end of the week which is contrary to what i was expecting i was expecting a similar pattern to last we catch a little bit earlier in the week and then come off again towards the end of the week we kind of saw a little bit of a different narrative play out this week where it was getting crushed towards the end of last week and stayed crushed throughout the early part of this week then started to lift as the major indices catching a little bit of red towards the end of this week uh, most of the major indices at least today as we are recording this and streaming it live here right around noon central on friday the 10th 
of November, hard to believe, 10th of November. Already got snow outside the windows here at the studio here in Chicago. A week and a half ago, it was 75 degrees. All of a sudden, we got snow. So, c'est la vie, such is life here in Chicago. But uh, most of the major indices off fractionally, about a quarter of a percent, a little less on the day. Uh, but that continued screens of red means we could get continued green on the VIX screen. Over the 11 handle today, 11.08 as we're kicking off the show here. So pretty aggressive, but not off the highs of yesterday where it briefly touched into the 12 handle uh, today, hovering right around 11. Either way, it ain't looking good for, I believe I was at 9 double. Yes, I was, 9.55. So I think my streak of close to bullseyes out there in the crystal ball may be coming to an end. But you know what's coming to an end? Let's see. Is my, uh, my rambling here, because I think we got the man about town over there at the SIBO, Mr. Russell Rhodes, straight from the presses, hot off the lectern there, lecturing at the SIBO Volatility Academic Conference. Mr. Rhodes, are you there, sir? I am. I am out of breath. Can you hear me? I can hear you. You came racing in. Awesome. I got a new laptop, which is giving me all kinds of trouble. Um, so let's so let's start laptop. let's start there. You guys are having a big shindig, a big volatility powwow over there at the SIBO. Before we even get into the vol review, what the heck are you guys doing? And is this the same kind of thing as RMC, different audience? What is the goal of this event? Oh, this is academics. This is in, in conjunction with the Financial Management Association. It is our second conference on derivatives and volatility. And... I just got done doing a presentation and got absolutely picked apart by Peter Carr from New York University. <laughs> what did he have he, to say? Uh, it was I was talking about the performance differences between our um, our, our rut buy right and rut put right and our SPX buy right and our SPX mm -hmm. put right and and. And the, the first slide, and I was doing somebody else's presentation because they bailed out on me at the last second. Mm -hmm. And um, and basically the first the first slide says, does put call parity break down? And and they say, well, you know, when you're when you're implementing a put right and a buy right like that, you're not selling the same call and put strike. And I'm like, yes, I know that. This isn't my presentation. But um, yeah, it was a uh, it, I if I could it, and I held my own with him. I'm feeling very good about myself. Um, but that was, uh, that's the kind of discussions that we are, uh, having the, the presentation Great. before me was idiosyncratic drunk jump risk matters, evidence from equity returns and options. Uh, and idiosyncratic junk, uh, lunch, drunk risk in VIX yeah. sounds pretty interesting as well. I never heard of drunk risk in yeah. VIX. That'd be an interesting presentation as well. Jump risk, <laughs> jump risk, jump, jump, jump. So, uh, so it's uh, it's some pretty uh, some pretty mathy type of stuff. Um, non parametric option implied volatility kicked the day off. What was what were the key takeaways? Any surprising research? Nobody out there pushing um, harvesting the risk premium today. Uh, the non non parametric option implied volatility presentation uh, bewildered the room. Um, the, uh, the jump risk matters. There was a lot of debate over the data that was being used versus, you know, bid ask spreads, especially because I uh, were talking about a, a wide variety of stocks and several of the stock option markets they were referring to have fairly wide spreads. Uh, yesterday, I uh, talked about variance risk premium on stocks and bonds. Uh, the, the guy from Copenhagen business school was basically saying that, uh, in reality, uh, trying to har harvest volatility risk premium, it, it's not uh, your, your primary goal. You still need to be taking a look at your directional outlooks. Uh, and then the first first paper that's been discussed so far was uh, something that, that actually I found pretty interesting. It was a discussion by a guy from Carnegie Mellon um, and a guy from MIT talking about uh, credit risk premia versus option risk premia and um, basically comparing com credit spreads with uh, individual equity implied volatilities. Lots of no, fun. <laughs> there's been some interesting, I, d I definitely agree with um, kind of what you have to say about uh, about uh, directional premium and, and straddles, uh, you know, especially with the fact that, that premium selling has become so much more popular, um, mm -hmm. especially in a low vol market. Uh, these and and so in a market where the VIX has been consistently, what was the time frame he was looking at? Just if you don't mind me asking, 
um, a couple of years on the, uh, the the wrist premium versus, uh, you know, the directional wrist premium dealy. Uh, keep talking and I'll find the dates. You know, um, it's a 43 page paper. Oh, wow. So I got to. So the one I'm more interested in is, is, is so if, if you're looking at like the last five years, um, that's absolutely pr true because the squeeze on 90 through 2014. Interesting. 90 through 2014. I mean, yeah, th that is a long period of time. And so his yep. whole point was that, you know, direction matters, even if you're just hedging, even if you're running a, a uh -huh. straddle thing. I agree with him. Uh, I think that's especially yeah. true today, given the fact that that volatility premiums have been squeezed so hard uh, in the last few uh, days and days and weeks and, and months. I mean, uh, M uh, MRA, Ma Macro Risk Advisors, put out a note earlier this week pointing out that uh, weekly straddles have not made money since uh, August. Um, so no, I'm I'm sure they haven't. No, and, and, it's actually uh, the, even though you know you you talk about, uh, and I assume it's at the money. Mm -hmm. um, you know, everybody talks about this cool time decay that you get with short term options that are at the money. Uh, yeah, even that. even with the market not moving around all that much, the the, the gamma gets you on those things. Yeah, you, you our, have our to... weekly our our weekly um, you know the 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 handful of strategy indexes that we have that use weekly options don't really do all that well. You take in a lot more premium, but uh, you get hurt uh, on the other aspects of being um, you know short options. Yeah, there is this huge. It, it is so much more. It, especially with weeklies, you almost have to have a direction. If you're just sitting there selling premium, yeah. you are not going to be a happy camper. Um, I, yeah. I, I think that it's a little different for the monthlies. That's why put right's been so well, done so well this year. But uh, the idea that uh, the idea that has been, I think, you know, almost irresponsibly pushed industry wide on on how easy it is to sell options. Not by not by the exchanges, but I mean. There's a lot of educators out there and a lot of people mm -hmm. like talk about how easy it is to sell options. It is not easy to sell options. Um, in fact, it, there have been periods of time, especially with the VIX and the nines, where it's been way easier to buy it be long. And you almost invariably have to have some sort of directional opinion. And even if you don't at onset, it turns into a directional opinion. So it, it is not a, a simple concept that it's laid out to be, folks. But Mark, you can harvest the risk premium. I don't know if you. Oh, it's so I easy. I don't know so if easy. you know that. <laughs> the, there, there, let's just put it this way: to to put it to our former co-host, lately there's been lots and lots of options that should not be sold. Yes, uh, palm, um, palms back in the pockets, hands back in the pockets exactly. on this one. Not a lot of uh, love. Well, Mister uh, Mister Rhodes, glad to hear that the academic conference is getting wonky. You'd expect not less from a, a big academic palooza uh, out here on all things vol. That said, aside from. Uh, uh, wonkiness aside, <laughs> anything else catching your eye this week from a straight vol perspective, sir? Well, we all see. All it takes is for me to guess an all-time low on the crystal did, ball. Did we not that call that? Going. Did we? I, I, I knew once, it. once you I called know that, it. once you called that, I should have gone back and immediately revised mine. I, I felt immediately <sighs> uncertain about that. Once you, once you broke, I knew the market was going to turn, and there we go. We did say that. So uh, when I leave the country. And when I guess low, low, that's the two things. And for everybody that's asking, I'm leaving the country again the day after Thanksgiving. Watch out go. for that, that shortened session. So VIX 25 calls, <laughs> here we come, baby. Yeah, but that, you're right. That was a little eerie <laughs> almost instantly afterwards. I was regretting that pick. And I was waiting for it to come. And sure enough, that, I wouldn't call it a VIX bomb because we didn't explode. But we did, did have some nice movement. And all of a sudden, my pick not looking so good. That said, sir, so you, you spooked the market. Anything else catching your eye? No, other than that, they've uh, they kept me running from place to place. You've been doing a lot of running. You, we'll figure out what your title is over there one of these days. We'll keep calling you Man About Town for now. Mr. Meatball, we were talking a little bit about some interesting stuff at the top of the show. Anything else catching your eye from a broad volatility perspective before we dive into some of the nitty-gritty here? No, nah, I I'm, I, I'm, can't even make something up right, right now. It's been running around with, chicken, with like a chicken with my <laughs> head cut off this week. Oh, looks like we. I was, so. I was just tossing it to the meatball, and looks like we lost. Skype gods, not everything's wonky today. Oh yeah, the mixler is not good. I wasn't tossing to you again, Mister Rhodes. Don't worry. I will save you from that. Let's move on. Some of the products here uh, that have been catching our eye, like we said, 
Uh, good old SKU index has been uh, trending south of late. So those of you who have been watching that, who get alarmed when it gets around that 150 level like it was flirting with, oh, about a week and a half, about two weeks ago or so now, you can take a deep breath because, once again, it is trending lower, uh, eight points lower than it was this time last week, which was about eight points lower that week as well. So it's come off quite a bit. It's right around 129. Again, uh, we'd love to have an intraday version of this. It's only once a day, but say la vie right now. All of you who get worried when it gets a little bit north, it's hovering right around. It's, it's close to its average right now. So nothing to be spooked out in that realm. Of course, VIX is moving. So VIX back elevated again, north of 100, 103 to be precise, coming into uh, today's show. So VIX rocking and rolling. Remember, upside and downside, both count from a vol. I know everyone likes to just pay attention to the upside, but both of them count when it comes to calculating the old vol. So VIX rocking and rolling. Uh, yet again out there. The story, actually, one of the interesting stories of the week has been NASDAQ vol and just Na- just Russell in general uh, kind of moving a little bit. You know, all of you who have been lamenting, maybe not this week, but up until this le- week, all of 2017, lamenting where the heck is the vol, where the heck is the vol. NASDAQ over the last week or two has been an interesting, oh, sorry, not NASDAQ, uh, <laughs> Russell 2000. Uh, has been an interesting place. So the Nasdaq's all right as well, but Russell 2000 has been where uh, the action is, and our old friend, uh, the Russell Vix RVX 15 and a half. Mr. Rhodes, I'll give you a little quick trivia question. We kind of play this game a lot whenever Russell has been moving of late. I usually try to, try to stump the meatball. Uh, it's not too hard, but I try to stump the meatball with uh, questions about uh, how, much, how much is lighting it up in RVX. Usually the answer is nothing. So uh, I'll give you a hint. Yesterday, it actually did trade a little bit. Take a guess how many RBX contracts went up yesterday. 42. That would usually be a ton of paper. I'd say you're a crazy person. But actually, yesterday, it put up 206 contracts, I believe. So uh, there you go, lighting it up, almost doubling its OI out there in RBX. So all of you guys who've been lamenting, wringing your hands, saying I need another ball product to harvest my premium or to trade or to trade a little back and forth between that and VIX. This is usually the time when RBX starts to get a little attractive to people, and that's what we saw yesterday with Dublin, the OI out there. Back to the old VIX, the futures coming in this morning. As you mentioned, the cash has kind of been creeping up, so it's been tightening that chasm, that gulf, which was very wide, uh, kind of tightening up. Coming in this morning, it was about a little less than three quarters of a, of a point between the cash and the front month. That is, of course, tightened up as the ca- as the cash has continued uh, to rally intraday. About two months out there, shy of two points now, about 1.8, 1.75 out there or so. So again, cash moving up, tightens things up uh, a little bit out there in uh, in all things in all things VIX land. Speaking of all things VIX, I know he's been busy at an academic conference, but you know what? we're going to put him to work anyway, listeners, because it's time for Russell's Weekly Rundown. Now, Russell's Weekly Rundown. Well, aside from a weekly straddles not getting the job done, anything else interesting on the weekly front, either at your conference or just in general this week, Mr. Rhodes? Ton of fun trades, and I'll tell you... uh, I keep getting a little bit. You, you keep cutting in and out. So if I start cutting in or out, interrupt me, and we will. Uh, I think. I think. I think. I think that's your new laptop because you've been kind of cutting out a little bit on us. But it's 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 listenable. I'm, but uh, we'll, hey. we'll we'll make we'll we'll fight our okay. way through the weekly rundown. See how it goes. All right. So uh, Monday, of course, all you know that's when people like to trade weeklies is on Monday. Uh, first thing, somebody sold a hundred of the November 29th ten calls, took in a buck eighty, uh, expecting low volume volatility to persist into the end of November. As a reminder, I will be out of the country. Uh, Somebody bought 120 of the November 8th. These have expired. Nine strike calls for 95 cents. If they held them through expiration, they made 15 cents because the uh, this past weekly VIX future weekly VIX futures and options settled at 1010. Uh, Somebody sold 100 of the 10 and a half puts for 69 cents. Bought 100 of the November 8th, nine and a half puts for nine cents. They took in 60 cents with a settlement of 10, 10. They made 20 cents off of this trade. Um, the 10 and a half puts settled, thir- settled 20, uh, sorry, 40 cents in the money for a 20 cent profit. Uh, somebody bought 159 of the November 8th, 10 puts for 35 cents. That didn't work very well. Uh, somebody, and this is a big trade, a big trade using the December 6th options. Uh, somebody sold 8,144 of the December 6th 
15 calls for 52 cents. There's a the market was seller that's doing that that trade. I don't they, they, doing that kind of trade. Size. But we've seen that 8200 mm -hmm. number a bunch over the last uh, few weeks. So somebody is that's implementing fair. a new strategy that's employing weeklies that involves some sort of long-term hedge with some sort of short-term call uh, selling. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know exactly what it is, but it's there's definitely somebody out there that has developed some sort of weekly systematic um, upside call trade. So they're selling the, these were, they were going out to December 6th on these, but um, so they're selling the, maybe the little bit farther out weeklies and, and they got something long somewhere. I'm sure they've got some, something long somewhere else. God, I yeah, hope they, they do. do. I think they've got, uh. like, right, I think they have like the, I think they've got some regular like 20 call or an 18 and they've got it in much bigger size. So what, what they tend to do, I believe, and I could be wrong, but they, they tend to buy like a bunch of upside calls in one strike and then systematically sell, sell against of it. these yeah. calls somewhere floating around. That's uh, It's okay. been a really a fascinating trade. And, you know, I can't put my finger on what the guy's on or has. My guess is this could also be related to something else he's got on, you know, uh, maybe a structured mm -hmm. note or, or something like that, but he, he's up to something. I, I just mm -hmm. don't know what. Okay. Well, if, if we find out, we won't share it. We'll just trade it on that. Yeah. So uh, one more, uh, let me see one more Monday, Monday, Monday trade uh, sold 200 of the November 29th. 13 puts for two bucks. Somebody just did that. Uh, Tuesday, little uh, things lighten up very quickly after Monday. Uh, people love Monday is weekly day down in that pit. Tuesday, somebody sold 100 of the November 8th, 10 and a half puts for 85 cents. Again, those were 40 cents in the money at expiration. So 45 cent profit. Uh, and then somebody sold a thought this was kind of interesting sold 100 of the november 8th 10 calls for 33 cents bought the november 8th 12 calls this was late in the day on tuesday might have been an exiting trade uh they uh they took in 30 cents and would have made 20 cents off the trade if they were not exiting um one thursday trade there was nothing on wednesday worth worth even talking about uh one thursday trade somebody sold and this this is a combination of it's it's a it's a time strangle that's, that's the best I can come up with. Uh, somebody sold 200 of the November 29th, 12 puts for 89 cents. And they also sold 200 of the December 20th. And those are standard expiration, 10 calls for $2.84 uh, and a net credit of 373. Uh, kind of a, an unusual, uh, they, they've got a very, very specific outlook. Uh, I think, you know, as long as, uh, nothing dramatic happens in December. Uh, you know, that that's probably not such a bad idea thinking about being short uh, things that expire on December 20th because of that, uh, that, that seasonal effect that we have talked about so much that I'm not going to be the broken record with. I'm just going to say, uh, take, and then take today, a drink if Russell mentions the seasonality There was one really large <laughs> trade that I'm going to depend on you guys for uh, because I, I, it, all the options traded in the middle, but there was a very large weeklies trade that, that I need somebody that has an ability to go talk to somebody that wasn't in a conference all day to check into. Uh, I did find a buyer of 750 of the November 22nd, 20 calls for 15 cents. Uh, and then somebody taking a, but that's a bullish look into uh, Thanksgiving week. Uh, somebody also took a bearish look into Thanksgiving week. They sold a hundred of the November 22nd for a buck 11 bought uh, 100 of the 15 calls for 36 cents, took in 75 cents, and they're safe as long as VIX is under 12.25 on November 22nd. There was, again, there was a very large trade using weeklies. Uh, I saw it. All the executions were in the middle. We're in the, when they're in the middle, I need to go talk to somebody in the pit. I was occupied, so I didn't get to go talk to somebody in the pit. So have you guys heard anything about that trade? Really quick, you broke up in the middle of it. Just give us the strikes again. Uh, on the trade that that occurred uh, in the yeah the big trade, the, what the, was the, that? The big I, one I, you were talking I may about. Have oh seen my it. god! Uh, bear with me, bear with me, bear with me. So um, while Russell's doing that, nothing wants, nothing out, works. There was a while I was while I'm talking to Russell, I would point out that that uh, 
there was a, a bunch of huge December that started going up today uh, and yesterday. Really, right before everything fell apart, some guy stepped in and bought 75,000 of the December quarters. Uh, we saw the December quarter 30 call spread trade. We've seen the, um, the 15s trade. Uh, there's also a seller of the Jan 20s out there. So there's been some some really interesting paper uh, floating around in uh, VIX itself. VVIX has remained really high. Uh, you know, just as a, as a point of commentary, one piece, and then Russell, it sounds like he's found his trade. Um, the, one piece <laughs> I, the one piece I will lay out is, you know, we've talked for about two weeks the fact that November it stayed really firm while the VIX cash was getting soft. You know, the VIX cash is hitting an all-time low at 9.12. All-time low settle at 9.12. And um, the VIX futures were still 11. Well, guess what? The VIX is now 11, and the VIX futures are 11 and a half. So it goes to show you that those futures are a much better predictor of where volatility is going to be than um, at, at settlement yeah. than I think the VIX cash is, is itself. So, Russell, what was your trade that you found? Uh, somebody did a, a, a pretty sizable spread, and it's imbalanced, and it uses three different options, and they all, again, they all traded in the middle. So, and when that happens, it, you you, you got to go ask for help as far as figuring these things out. Um, it looks like they may have sold the December thirteenth sixteen calls and bought the December 13th, 17 calls. And then they also did something in the November 22nd, 20 calls in much bigger size. And I can't figure out if they bought or sold there. I'm just looking here. Combined into one big, one ugly, mega. nasty spread. <laughs> one mega spread. Uh, yeah, I'm looking here, a bunch of- Yeah, uh, it really, I mean, it was. I mean, the, 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 the 20 calls in this spread probably traded 40,000 times. Yeah, I'm just in a bunch of funny lots. They, they did a block of about twenty-five thousand for fifteen cents. They did another eight thousand a little bit later for yeah. fifteen cents again. So yeah, you're right. That's already up to over thirty odd thousand, uh, six thousand looks yeah. like here. So yeah, about pushing forty thousand on these for a variety of prices. I'll have to dig in. You're right. The execution. Is, if you give me a minute, I'll make a phone call and figure out what this is. While you're doing that, okay. Mr. Meatball, I will dive into the big mothership VIX options. For this week, as Mr. Meatball alluded to, our friend who did the, the three-way about a month ago or so has, has really driven a lot of interest in that DS 25 strike. In fact, it continues to trade today. 50,000 of the DS 25 calls going up. Paper gobbling those up for 32 cents. Also worth noting, uh, 11 puts lighting it up today in DS as well. 60,000 of those. Uh, but our hot strikes, top 10, number one with a bullet here. In terms of the mothership VIX options, once again, as I just mentioned, the D25s, they continue to add OI pretty much week after week. It seems like this guy, whenever he picks his strikes, uh, people tend to, they just tend, he's so sized that people just tend to, it's like the whale and then the little lampreys and everything else kind of just go along for the flow. Or the, everyone just collectively decided 25 is the place to be in December. Maybe they're not really looking at the seasonality of Vol that Mr. Rhodes was just alluding to. Get Take your beverage, by the way, if you have, because... He likes to say that a lot. Uh, but yeah, D's 25 is number one with the bullet. 710,000, gaining another 60-odd thousand uh, this week. Putting up another 50,000 today. That's not even included in the OI. Uh, so a lot of action out there. Number one with the bullet by far. You, know, you, get, you, you start threatening a million on one strike. You know, the product does a lot of paper. Uh, number two, falling off quite a bit, but still huge. Uh, the D's 15s, 515,000. Those bad boys lighting it up take the number two spot. We drop off yet again for number three, but still sizable. 400,000 of the Nob 20s, the aforementioned uh, strike that Mr. Uh, these, are the, no, these are the regular monthlies, though. Those, are, I believe, are the weeklies on the 22nd. So a little bit different expiration cycle. Same strike love, though. Uh, 400,000 of the Nob 20s lighting it up uh, for open interest-wise, we're saying, this week. Number four, the Dece 12 puts, again, part of that magical three-way, 372,000. Those bad boys open for the first and only put on our list here. Number five, the Nob 21s, aspiring uh, on the 15th, actually. So these are monthlies. Uh, 334,000 of those bad boys. Number six, the Dece 22s, 308,000 contracts open there. Number six, number seven, 263 of the Nob 17s. Uh, number eight, the Dece 20s, uh, 240,000 open there. Number nine, the Nob 15s, the comparatively reasonable Nob 15s, about a quarter of a two, 225, actually 226,000 uh, open out there. And rounding out the top 10 here, the D17s, 222, 
thousand contracts open there. Total of about twelve point seven million open, about ten point one on the calls, and about two point six million open on the puts. Let's just see. Uh, let's see if I bought enough time for the meatball to find any flavor. Otherwise, we'll look in some of our earnings vol. Mr. Meatball, got any color for us, sir? Uh, they're working on it. They're going to call me back. So I'll have color by the end of the show. There we go. But, Speak, uh, we can keep nothing rolling. Yet, so, nothing yet so far. This is the magic of VIX, a large institutional product. Surprise, surprise. They put up size very well. They know how to facilitate this stuff. So they put up prints that aren't obvious on the surface, listeners, exactly what the hell they were up to. That's why you got to do a little digging. Uh, speaking of a little digging, Mr. Mister Meatball, I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm going to have you guess. I know this is a hard one for you. I think you can do it. Right now, VXX, rally homo today, up to 79 cents. 34.79 right now out there in VXX land, about a little over 2%. Mr. Meatball, out on a limb right now. Can you guess, number one, open interest position, the size position in VXX right now? Have at it, sir. Go. Oh, we lost a meatball again. Well, What's going I am, on? I okay. am a okay. I, I had 10 points. Yes, you can, <laughs> you can play this game too, Mr. Rhodes. It is indeed the Jan 2019 10 puts, of which Mr. Meatball has bought and sold a few. They continue to dominate out there, well over 100,000 open in that spot. Uh, again, maybe someday we'll see a fund that opens that exists just to sling that uh that vol let's move on to uh some earnings it's been a lot of earnings popping off this week well, let's see it's still active time of course we had some firm not too familiar with here on the show called sabo i believe uh coming off on tuesday <laughs> uh we also saw some other names uh pricing in uh, this week as well including disney and nvidia popping off last night disney uh, let's see, where did they close going in to the, uh, the number itself where they're trading today? Let's see if I can pull up here. There we go, where they closed yesterday. They closed right around 102.68. They were pricing in right around 5 bucks, so a little shy of 5% there. Uh, so far, intraday, they're up a little bit over 3 bucks, about 305. So uh, they're up about a little, a little bit shy of 3%, so decent move. They were selling off for a while there in the after hours, so... I guess if you work some underlying, a little bit of a gamma scalp, you could do all right. You could make up because they were off about two bucks and change in the after hours, up three bucks now. Intraday, net five bucks. So you could have scalped that straddle if you were very savvy, uh, but uh, challenging nonetheless. Again, this gets back to the argument. We won't rekindle it here. We just had it again last night on the option block about after hours options trading. We could spend an hour doing that, but instead, uh, Disney bucking the trend of premium buying this quarter as well. Again, just shows kind of what an outlier it was about two weeks ago, that massive day with Microsoft and Amazon. But they just blew the doors off everything. That's, that's very much the outlier day. But of course, it's so big that if you're selling premium, it could wipe out many, many quarters as a result. So uh, interesting stuff. NVIDIA also has been very interesting for the better part of the last two years, actually, they've really been on a tier of late. They closed yesterday, uh, let's see, about, oh, about 205.30, and they were pricing in about 16 bucks, so pretty hefty, about 8%. And they opened up about half that today, about up about 8 bucks. And intraday, they've traded up, oh, about 30, they got as high as about up 13 bucks. So they were flirting, they were getting close to the extremities of that straddle, but not quite the, uh, you know, knock them knock down, rock them, sock them robots type of uh, trade that perhaps a lot of people were expecting. Again, NVIDIA has been lighting it up for the better part of the past two years, so they can't, every cycle can't be a home run, but still the stock looking good. Clearly they haven't spent all their momentum in the mobile space, even with other players like Intel and others really ramping up their efforts to compete. Seems like NVIDIA able to brush that off and continuing uh, to rally on high. Speaking of rallying, we actually did see a little bit of a bump out here in uh, good old uh, crude vol this week. Good old OIV, a.k.a. the crude VIX, uh, up about nearly 28. I got, I got over 28 today. So you're talking, it was about, oh, about three or four, three and a half points or so higher than where it was this time last week. So all you've been writing to us, and we'll get into this a lot more on TWIFO, obviously. That's kind of our domain over there. All things futures, options, and commodity vol and skew. Uh, but all of you have been writing in saying, hey, give me some, where can I, when can I buy some premium and crude? When's it going to work out? 
At least this week, it seems to have been all right. You didn't see the continued bleeding uh, that you saw out there in all things crude vol for pretty much the better part of the last few months. Uh, gold vol also up a little bit, which kind of had to be, right? I mean, uh, this thing has just been, uh, it's about, oh, about a point and change higher than it was this time last week. At least when you're looking at good old GVZ, which is the gold VIX out there. And we've mentioned many times on on TWIFO particularly, that it's kind of flirting at or near record lows from an implied vol perspective out there. So if you're looking at a place for cheap premium, maybe sell or don't sell. <laughs> maybe you're definitely on the don't sell camp out there in gold these days. It's hovering right around the bottom of those five-year vol cones out there, which is always a place to make me nervous to sell any vol out there. So if you're looking for cheap vol, who knows? Maybe, or excuse me, maybe gold is indeed the place. All right, I've vamped for a bit here. Mr. Rhodes, or Mr. Meatball, any further color on that trade or anything else you want to add on, let's say, it could be the Disney and the earnings vol or perhaps commodity vol, anything else that's floating in either of your boats? I've got all kinds of color for you now. All I've right. got tons of color. Go for so it, sir. I have heard from my, uh, my sources so that, uh, that huge three-way that went up. They were a seller of the 16, 17 call spread and D's 13s, small. And then they, they bought 50,000. They were buyers of the November. So this is a bit, pretty decent bet. That uh, leading into uh, Thanksgiving, there's going to be some sort of uh, some sort of, of, of increase in volatility, or at least someone is hedging off that that risk. So they were uh, a buyer of the no of the near dated November and a seller of the the longer dated call spread. So that was kind of the way that worked out. Now the other piece that was interesting, I don't know if you talked about this, Mark. Did you look at TY VIX? So VIX of the ten year uh, early this week, I believe it hit. Since they, since SIBO listed it and started tracking it, I believe it hit an all-time low, uh, or at least it hit a several years low. And uh, of course, uh, at the same time, now is the period of time where people think the tenure might actually start moving. So it's it's really kind of phenomenal that that we've seen bond vol get this smacked. I, I took that as an opportunity to just you know my PA playing around just to um, the trade in in TLT, uh, but uh, vol's got really cheap in the bond market, uh, except for, as, as you know, in uh, some of the, the junk bonds where J&K and HYG both looked just abysmal this week, uh, just a real rough day in, in, in bond vol. So it was kind of puzzling that you've got uh, U.S. Treasury bond vol, uh, you know, getting near lows. Meanwhile, the, the, the high yield market is falling apart. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. We don't get a chance to really talk, talk uh, TY VIX. This is, of course, the 10-year U.S. Treasury note VIX. SIBO has a VIX, just about everything under the sun. I'm waiting for the peanut butter and jelly VIX uh, to come on out. But, of course, TY VIX, the Treasury VIX. I'm talk about it for a number of reasons. Hasn't been the sexiest sector for the past year or so. And also, uh, you know, there's no options on it, so you can't really uh, do all the slinging like we talked about when we talked about VIX and other things. But still, uh, he's right. It is flirting. Looking at a two-year chart here, and we are right around. May have had a couple of blips uh, let me see, lower here, but uh, low, well, no, that's 429, so oh, 3.34 is the low that at least I see here that it hit back on October 18th of last year at 3.84 right now. So we're pretty close, pretty darn close to it, even if we aren't there uh, right now, but still interesting times out there. In all things fixed income, maybe we'll get to a little bit. We'll see. Maybe on Twifo if you want that. I know you guys have all written in for pretty much all Bitcoin all the time on Twifo. So we'll be doing a lot of that in a little bit. But first, it's time for you guys. Speaking of writing in, it's time for you guys to regale us with your questions. It is time for the volatility voicemail. It's time to share your thoughts and opinions with your fellow volatility traders. It's time to check the volatility voicemail. Make your voice heard by dialing 779-669-4VOL, posting a comment on theoptionsinsider.com, sending an email to questions at theoptionsinsider.com, right. or posting your questions to twitter.com slash options, or facebook.com slash theoptionsinsider. All right, everybody, welcome to the Vol Voicemail, the portion of the show where you guys take the reins, you ask us questions. We tend to occasionally ask you guys questions like we do this week. Our question of the week is we've, we've advocated on this show even many times that maybe you want to keep your powder dry during the earnings event itself. That said, we know you guys can't help yourselves. You love it. It's tempting. We understand. Uh, so that said, you guys love it. You can't resist. So what is your go-to? What is your earnings options M.O.? 
Uh, we got buy calls or call spreads. We got buy puts or put spreads. We got sell puts, go a little dark side, or put spreads, or all the flies, all the, all the wings, flies, iron flies, iron condors, all blumped together, long, short, we don't care. If you're trading something with the wing, it's in that category. So, Or if you got something else, write it in. All, all you've written in, I think Uncle Mike on the show yesterday said he liked uh, VIX, uh, what do you say, VIX ratio, uh, ratio... VIX vertical backspreads is what his write-in was for. Uh, Mr. Rhodes, you haven't had a chance to weigh in on this one yet. You know, if you gotta, if you gotta play earnings, how gun to your head, how would you do it? And then also B, what do you think our hardcores are doing out there? If I gotta play earnings, you gotta play, no choice. Gangster, gangster has a gun to your that head. That has a straddle that is priced higher, or yeah, that has a straddle that is priced. I don't know, 30% higher than the average three-year move. And then I'll go sell an, uh, and then I'll go put an iron condor on. That's the only thing that I'm going to do with respect to earnings. So you're going to sell that iron condor? So you're going to be in the short iron well, condor? I'm going to put right? an iron condor on, but, I, but the break-even levels on both sides need to be outside, uh, well outside of the average move. Well, I, I, can, I can feel that. I can understand what you're selling here. What do you think our hardcores are, are picking here? Rare. That's it. What do you think? What do you think our crazies out there are picking? Uh, they're probably buying straddles. <laughs> <laughs> buying straddles. <laughs> Luckily, we don't have that as an option. We don't. We don't have that. That those that many crazies out there. Uh, we, I'll put you down for the buy calls side. Or you can be put buy puts, but I'll, I'll be charitable and say you said buy calls. Mister Meatball, have your thoughts changed on this since last night? No, they have not. Uh, and you know, I heard, found assuming things haven't changed since yesterday. I kind of already know where things are there, but no, I, I, I'm a, I, I, my earnings trades are few and far between, and only if there's a ton of edge in it. I actually go the opposite way. When, when, earn, when the premium is so oversold that it's well below where normal things, I, where it normally would be, I like buying straddles. That I actually take the opposite of Russell's approach, but I, I actually think maybe both of those combined could be a pretty neat strategy. There you go. The Earnings Extremes Fund. There you go. Fund 3 at Carmeline. Actually, it's going to be Fund 4 because Fund 3 is going to be uh, buying a whole bunch of BXX long-term other money puts and just set it in and forget it. It's going to be the easiest management fee anyone's ever made. <laughs> Buy these puts. Come check in to me on about three years see how we're doing. Speaking of check-in, let's see how you guys are actually voting on this thing. 36% going for the wings. Uh, flies, iron flies, iron condor. I think that's down a little bit from yesterday. I think selling puts getting a little bit more love. 31% saying selling puts or put spreads. Uh, 29% going to buy some calls or call spreads. So you're in the Russell camp buying some premium. Or actually, Mr. Meatballs, uh, but Russell said he likes, he, he thought you guys were buying straddles. So we didn't give you that choice because that's crazy takes. All right, and last, 4% only for buying puts. No love for directional downside plays during earnings. Who'd a thunk it? All right, we got a bunch of, uh, here's Mr. Rhodes tweeting out TY Vix all-time lows. We'll retweet it for you guys on uh, the show. Let's see here, what we got? A bunch, let's see. Um, uh, here's a quick one. This is a comment from, uh, from the chat from t Mall. I think this is what we were talking about earlier, Mr. Meatball. You were saying, you know, firms, how hard it is to write options and make it be effective. He says, big options sell firms gain AUM as they do well. Well, that's true. Yeah, they're going to harvest more premium and have more to sell. Uh, he goes on to write, they are another growing, quote, natural seller of options weekly and monthly. Not real price sensitive. That is their business now. Quote, the model says my probability of profit is blank. Um, yeah, I guess if they're an options selling firm, then they probably will have, as a function of their business model, selling options. Yes, and I've got to imagine if they're doing that now, and they're not playing in the weeklies, then they're probably doing something wrong. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's probably true. I don't know a lot of firms out there that, I mean, I'm thinking you're talking about trading firms, obviously, and those trading firms usually like to take both sides. I don't know a lot of firms that are big, big trading firms like, oh, we just sell. And obviously, there are funds and desks that do that kind of thing, but... Uh, Again, a conversation for another day. But yeah, that's uh, that's that's true. If you sell options and you do well, eventually your AUM, your ability to sell more will continue. So yes, there is a little bit of a perhaps a feedback loop uh, to that. All right, Chris uh, Thomas, chiming in here saying, "Hey guys, hey Chris." Uh, he goes on to write, uh, "Trading a long calendar on VIX is a bad idea. 
and that what you pay isn't the max loss. A lot of nuance there. We can probably get into that for a while. He goes on to write, it's possible for the, close, for, excuse me, for the closer expiration to experience a larger move than the back month, and thus you can lose more than you make, question mark. I believe I understand that correctly, so my actual question is, is this also true for SVXY and VXX? Thanks for imparting your knowledge uh, so us plebeians can learn. <laughs> All right, anyone who throws plebeians into, the art, into his question, he gets, uh, he gets bumped up. Good question, a lot to unpack. I've been talking a lot here, Mr. Rhodes, so I'm going to let you run with this one. Because you just came from an academic conference, so this one's right up your alley. First off, let's start with the beginning. You know, the time spread, long time spreads on VIX being perhaps a little bit more dangerous than elsewhere. And then if you want to extend the analogy to SBXY and BXX, I have at it, sir. Um, well, he's absolutely, it's, it sounded more like a great statement than a question. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm on board, uh, I'm on board with know, him. <laughs> it was like he, he summed it up particularly yes. well. And the answer that's, is yes. That's why you don't want to trade calendar spreads. And you don't want to approach a VIX calendar spread with the same mentality that you would pretty much any other market, because what you are basically doing is trading options on different underlyings because of the, yeah. the way that we can go from backwardation to uh, contango and, and vice versa. Uh, in fact, um, the the trade that, that we explored that, that Mark Sebastian got the color for is kind of a smarter way to go about doing a calendar spread uh, because they're selling a call spread and buying a call. So they've yeah. got limited losses on the call spread side. Go them. Risk control. Yeah, you, you know? Well, the close, I think the closest thing to what you will see in um, VIX futures and, and, in, and in VIX options is maybe you could make a comparison to some of the grain markets where new crop mm -hmm. and old crop trade yeah. entirely differently. But that's yeah. how, in, in terms of equity, you know, equity traders are you really used to the way equities trade with each other. Um, and, and VIX futures don't work that way. Now, the second part of the question was, can I trade SVXY and VXX and UVXY like a traditional calendar? And the answer is yes. Um, that does actually expire just into it. In, they all expire into the same underlying. I think... Really, the key to a VIX future is look at every single um, option as having their own individual underlying, whereas SVXY, VXX, UVXY, yes, they are a basket of VIX futures, but they are all the exact same underlying, so that you are trading in different calendar months the exact same product. So, uh, if you can, so for instance, in VXX, if I could buy a VXX calendar for a credit, I will do position limit. That said, uh, in, VX, in VIX, uh, there's no particular edge in doing a calendar for a credit. All it really tells me is that mm -hmm. generally probably VIX futures are backward, and maybe there's some mean reversion uh, heading my way. So uh, two entirely different trades. But uh, your, this, uh, this individual has kind of the inner workings of that market about dead on. Yeah, well done. I think we uh, we can conclude with that. A lot of people are used to, you know, their traditional calendars on a simple stock, you know, and that's pretty much uh, kind of what you get. Out here in the big space and others, you got these futures, as Russell alluded to, it's pretty much a different underlying that you're trading this calendar on. So it's a very much a different beast, and you're right pretty much uh, there. Good good question there. Let's see if we got a quick – we got a bunch of them that are more um, – let's see. We think we squeeze one more here from uh, – Encino J. Asking, he's talking, picking the calendars and VIX. He says, here's my time strangle trade idea for VIX. VIX, so a time strangle trade. He wants to buy one to two year VXX, 20% out of the money puts. All right, I think we're with you there. We've just extolled those virtues many times on this show. That's, that's Mr. Sebastian's forthcoming third fund. Uh, he also wants to buy approximately three month, 20% out of the money VIX calls. Hmm. And that's his, that's his time strangle. So he's got the VIX upside. He's got the VXX erosion. I'm with you on the first part. I may go a little bit farther out than 20%. 20% is still going to be kind of rich. But if you're willing to pay for that, it's fine. Uh, the, but the calls, 20% out of the money, naked, 
I don't know if I'm on board. I mean, it's, I mean obviously that trade hasn't performed pretty well. This week, notwithstanding, hasn't performed pretty well throughout the entirety of 2016. Maybe if you said a vertical, I would be more on board with this. So maybe if you add that leg, we say, I don't care. I'm gonna, and a bricks vertical, some rational vertical. You say 20%, so maybe 20 30, 20, 25 vertical, something like that. Uh, not strikes, but percentage out of the money. Then I could be more on board with that. Just the naked buy in the calls, you're going to give up a lot of what you're getting in the erosion of VXX pretty quickly, particularly if you're doing that every quarter. That's going to go away pretty quick until uh, you get a hit. But uh, that said, I don't know. Let's start. Let's go backwards. Mr. Meatball, what do you think of this time strangle? 20% out of the money, one to two year VXX puts, and then naked buy in, 20% out of the money, VIX calls every quarter. Yeah, you know, I agree. You've got, uh, you, I like the VXX idea. The one thing I always explain to people with VIX is you've got to think about how people are using VIX to hedge. People are not worried about VIX um, hitting 12 or 13. They're worried about uh, They're really worried about VIX hitting, um, you know, 20, 30, 40. So where VIX is expensive, where those options are really expensive, is those way out of the money options. So when I'm using VIX as a hedge, or if I'm setting up VIX for, um, for a hedge, I, I like selling that stuff. I, uh, I'm a big proponent of, you know, setting up call spreads, things like that. You know, one, one trade I was looking at, you know, is take a look at December. Uh, the, at yesterday, when I was looking at it, I could buy a December, uh, I could buy December 12 half. This is before things kind of blew up. So I could buy a December 12 half, 20 call spread for under a dollar. That's where I see value, not in, not in owning some way out of the money call. Um, you know, you get real good risk reward on 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 blowups in cheapy call spreads. So, you know, I would even push buy your your call 20 percent out of the money and sell a call that's 30 percent out of the money, or you know something along those lines to try and capture some value there otherwise you're just you're just throwing bad money after good mr Rhodes. same question for you sir uh, what do you think of this uh quote-unquote time strangle here vxx versus vix calls it's a little spooky why not do the uh you know i i'm never ever going to be comfortable with somebody selling calls without you know some sort of a hedge and, uh, you know, it, 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 I got no problem with them doing that, but maybe doing it and selling call spreads and selling, instead of selling the naked uh, he, calls. He, he's buying, by the way. He's, yeah. buying, he's buying the strangle. Oh, I thought he – okay. I thought he was – darn it. I thought he was – I thought he was selling calls to take in premium to help pay for the puts. That's what – that's the impression I had. Well, I, I wouldn't – you know, that call side of it again, I don't really think – I. I I, either way, you're uncomfortable with the call side. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, I, it, gosh, it, those calls pay off so infrequently, you know. Yeah, that's a rough road. And, and I think you're gonna make money. You're gonna make money on the put side, no question. Uh, over time, that just I, you know, I probably shouldn't say no question, but they're more often than not with the way that VXX has behaved in its lifetime. You're gonna do okay with that side of it, but I'm afraid you're gonna give it all up buying those VIX calls. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna hemorrhage a lot of that every quarter after quarter, waiting for the one moment that it outperforms. Net over time, you could if you catch that big VIX move, you could do all right. But uh, yeah, I'm uh, I think we're all a little a little uneasy about that strangle. Come back to us with a different version, maybe a vertical at least, and we'll see. Meanwhile, we gotta keep rolling. It's time for the the final embarrassment block. Yes, it's time for the crystal ball. It's time to peer into the future and reveal what the volatility gods hold in store. It's time to look into the crystal ball. All right, everybody. That music means it's time for our final segment, the crystal ball. And I'm sad to say that my streak of, of unerringly precise prognostication in VIX, apparently has come to an end after so many just, you can only hit the bullseye on the dartboard so many times when people think you're cheating. So I guess it's a good week that, a uh, good time to let, let the ball fall to others. In that sense, I don't think any of us 
really won in the technical term this week. Our highest pick for this week was 9.99. That was your work wife there, Mr. Meatball, the Rock Lobster. Uh, he picked 9.99, I think just to be silly, because uh, we were all hovering south of, uh, all hovering firmly in single digits. Uh, Russell picking an eight handle, 8.95. Let that sink in, listeners. Once he did that, I knew, I knew the worm was going to turn. Unfortunately, I picked first, so I couldn't change. Uh, so that said, all of us missing 11.19 here to close out the show. So all of us several handles away uh, Mr. Rock Lobster, 1.2 handles away, uh, so he's the closest, but no victory. That said, I'll allow Mr. Meatball to uh, somehow have pride of place, if he wants it, or if he wants to pick somebody else, because uh, his work wife did the closest. Mr. Meatball, what are you feeling this time next week? Um, what, did, what did Andrew pick last week? 9.99. All right, let me think about this. I'm going to go 9.99. <laughs> How did I know that you were going to do that again? Uh, let's see. Next closest, well, closest in quotes, uh, was me. I still like the range I was in, nine double, you know, outside of this little aberrant blip, uh, a little bit of a sell-off. If the sell-off continues, then we won't retrace those levels. But I don't know. I'm going to feel, I got a feeling this bull has been so hard to derail. I don't know if it's coming this week. So I'm going to go back to where so Mr. Meatball is right around the uh, nine, the 10 level now. So I got to stay lower, I guess, but I'm going to give myself a little bit more juice on the upside. I'm going to say 9 point, so that's I'm putting that in. Russell, that should be me. 9.65 for myself. And last but not least, Mr. Rhodes, which eight handle are you picking this week? Uh, I'm going to stick with a low, but I'm going to do 9.15 because it's, uh, it's the week before Thanksgiving, guys. Mr. Rhodes, never missing a chance to remind us of the seasonality of volatility. And that music is reminding us that it's time to bring to a close this epic journey through the world of volatility. Talking VIX Weeklies, VIX Motherships, BXX, uh, all SVXY, you name it, OIB, GBZ, all of the above. Getting into the vol conversation, a little bit of Disney, a little bit of NVIDIA, a little bit of earnings, all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, thanks to all of you who uh, held through the, uh, the issues. I know there are things like the chat held up. Pretty good. What we're going to do is just reboot everything ahead of Twifo. So if you want to stay tuned for Twifo, come back in about 28 minutes, 1.30. Uh, we'll have the live stream up and running again. Should be, um, Hopefully should be no issues, and you guys can enjoy. I know lots of you voting for Bitcoin this week. Many, many hundreds, so we'll probably have to talk about that, as well as crude, gold, whatever the hell else we got on the board, volatility skew, all that fun stuff. Come back 1.30 for that. But before we go, let's go back around the horn. Mr. Rhodes, we'll start with you. You guys got your big event going on right now. Anything else? What else is cooking in the land of SIBO? Any second now. What was that? I said I got to get back down there. Peter Carr is getting ready to give our keynote speech. All right. So what, what's cooking in SIBO, sir, that you can run? Uh, you know, we're waiting to, to hear about our approval on Bitcoin. Uh, we're, a bunch of us are heading off to Asia right after Thanksgiving for RMC Asia. Ah, yes, RMC Asia. Check it out, cboerMC.com. Thank you, Mr. Rhodes. You may now go back to being uh, just ripped apart by academics left and right, sir. Enjoy that process. And, Mr. Meatball, we touched on it at the top of the show, but if you want to hit it again, if folks are intrigued by your forthcoming new fund, where should they go? What should they do? Uh, you know, you can just email me, mark at, uh, uh, mark at carmenlinecapital.com. And uh, our, uh, we're going to be doing a free webinar on the 17th uh, at Option Pit on VIX. So uh, if you're interested in Having a little more on VIX than uh, a little more on on uh, more on VIX, uh, then uh, come and uh, check us out and make sure you're on our email list and we'll have information on our blog. All right, thank you for that. His blog over there can be found at optionpits.com. On behalf of Mr. Meatball and Mr. Rhodes, one day, someday down the street, down the years, there, Doctor VIX and indeed myself. I want to thank all of you out there in the listening audience. For downloading, streaming, and subscribing to the show. And, of course, sending in such great questions. Keep them coming. Like I said, we'll be back. If you're listening live, we'll be back in about 25 minutes for all things Twifo. If you're listening after the fact, we like you guys, too. And we'll see you next week for more of This Week in Futures Options.
The preceding program was a production of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com.